The Flex widget is similar to the row and column widgets, but it allows you to switch between those two. Okay, but why would you wanna do that? One word, responsiveness. Because the most fundamental thing you're doing when you're designing for different screen sizes is turning rows into columns. That is, you have more horizontal space on desktop, and when you move to mobile, you have much less horizontal space, so those sections and widgets that were once next to each other now need to be stacked on top of one another. So let's look at how to use this widget. So we've got our standard column widget right here. And if we want to replace this with our flex widget, let's go in here and replace it. And you can see that the properties look very similar, except for this property right here is horizontal. And so if we switch it to true, that column becomes a row and vice versa. That's it, that's the flex widget. But let's show you a couple of practical examples. So let's create this UI right here. We have two sections and when it goes down to mobile, they will be stacked on top of one another. Okay, let's go do this. Okay, so here's our starting point. So we've got our flex widget with our left side, which is this image and our right side, which is this type and the buttons right here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to my left side right here and switch it to expanded and do the same to the right side so they're filling up equal space. And then when we wanna move to mobile here, so let's switch it to mobile. Of course it breaks because we don't have enough horizontal space. So then we switch it off and now it's vertical, a column. But of course, you're probably not gonna wanna hard code this, that is set one value for all different screen sizes. So you wanna bind it. And and you can use this nifty responsive value with all the responsive values and logic already set up. Now you can change any of this. This is just a helper value we've provided with some logic built out. Now each of these conditions corresponds to a screen size. So up here, this will be the condition for mobile or your smallest breakpoint, then your tablet, and then above here, your desktop. So what this logic is doing is it's looking at the screen width, the current screen width of the user. And if it's less than and your small breakpoint, then this value, whatever's here, will be returned. Now, what are these breakpoints? Well, these are defined in your theme settings under your design system, these breakpoints right here. And of course, you can change these if you want. So if we go back here, and let's go back into this binding right here and our responsive value. Let's make it a little bigger right here. So this is saying if this is less than the smallest breakpoint, or in shorthand, if this is on mobile, then what do we want? Well, we want it to be a column. So we don't want this to be true because if it's true, it's going to be a row. So it's really these other ones down here that we want to be rows. Okay, great. Let's confirm that and test it. All right. So here we're on desktop and if we're on mobile, it stacks correctly. Beautiful. Now, of course, we have to deal with the type and the padding and you would do that the same way that you handle responsiveness with that one property. So let me show you that real quick. So here on this column, I've got this padding applied right here. But once again, we don't want this hard coded in. So let's instead come in here, come to our responsive value, and we can add that 83 in that we were using over here. And down here on mobile, we wanted to set it to something smaller, like maybe 20, and we'll add in 24 right here. And we can add a preview in down here at 20. Okay, yeah, that's looking good for now. Now, one last reminder that while you could handle the responsive type here with font sizing, responsive typography is already built into your theme settings right over here, and you make your typography responsive. And so you can set your values for each of these screen sizes. So that's the Flex widget in Flutterflow. Let us know if you have any questions below and we'll see you in the next video.